Welcome to Mimeo Training Quick Learn On Demand, Mimeo View Setup and Support. In this session, we'll conduct an overview of the Mimeo Studio software and how to update your software. We'll conduct a, a Mimeo View hardware review, how to power the Mimeo View, how to get the Mimeo View connected to your computer, how to utilize the microscope eyepiece adapter, how to use the different device buttons and the different menu options within the software, and then finally how to take care and clean your Mimeo View. So first and foremost, you want to make sure that you have the latest version of the Mimeo Studio software installed on your computer. You can always download the latest version from Mimeo.com and make sure that you have that installed on a computer. It cannot be installed on a server or on a network. It does have to be installed on each individual computer. If you do have the software, you can very easily verify what version you have by going up to the Help menu and click on About Mimeo Studio. So the latest version that I'm running currently is 11.00. If you are a Mac user, you can find your version by clicking on the Notebook menu and click on About Mimeo Studio. Now once your software is installed, you are ready to go. If you don't have any other Mimeo products, you can certainly evaluate the full version of the Mimeo Studio software for 30 days. And to do that, you would again go to the Help menu and About Mimeo Studio and it says not activated in, in that case. So you could very easily click the evaluate button and that will enter you into a 30 day full access. You'll have all the features enabled. If you choose not to do that and you don't have any products, you can uh, use the free trial version which will not have every uh, feature enabled but you'll still be able to utilize uh, most of the features of the software. So you have some options there if you don't have the products. Of course, the easiest way to activate the software if you have a product is simply by plugging it in. So if you have a Mimeo View document camera, simply attach that to your computer via the USB cable and your software will automatically be enabled and you will be ready to roll. So it's very easy to uh, get up and running. So let's start with a uh, review of the different hardware pieces that you're going to see. So uh, on this page, you're going to see the main items that come with the Mimeo View box. Of course, it is the Mimeo View document camera itself. You have a microscope adapter if you are uh, needing something like that. Let's say if you're a science teacher and you have microscopes that you can use uh, a, a microscope adapter for. And then lastly, you have a micro USB cable that allows you to connect the, the uh, Mimeo View document camera to your computer. So let's start with the actual Mimeo View document camera. So uh, first of all, the, the camera itself is fantastic. You're going to see it has a variety of gooseneck uh, objectives and gooseneck lights. So the main, the main uh, one in the middle here is the actual uh, major piece of the camera. It's a two micron camera which has a resolution of approximately 1600 by 1200. So one of the best you're going to find on the market. Uh, flanking the middle uh, camera piece are two LED lights. Those are your light sources. They automatically come on uh, and you can control whether those are on or off uh, within the software if you choose. So uh, you'll also notice that the base of the menu view is a straight edge and that's basically allowing you to align any content, books or papers uh, in front of that as you uh, get the, the camera flexed and, and uh, get that into the view that you want. So these goosenecks are very flexible. You can arrange those in any, any particular pattern or any different position that you choose to. It gives you a great deal of flexibility. Uh, to get those images displayed on your computer, but also on your projector for, for your students. So back to our main screen here, uh, we'll talk about the microscope adapter. So the microscope adapter uh, is just a piece, uh, it's a circular piece of plastic, and on the bottom side of the eyepiece of the camera are a couple notches. You can simply uh, insert, there's two little notches, you can insert those uh, right on the camera itself and twist that just a little bit and that locks it in there. And then this device, the eyepiece, will actually fit right over the microscope eyepiece. So the technique for getting that on the microscope appropriately is that you would put it down all the way on the eyepiece and then you bring it up about halfway. Uh, as with any microscope uh, camera, there's a little bit of finagling that you have to do to get the angle just right and you may have to adjust the microscope settings itself. But it gives you great pictures great possibilities as far as what you can do. So that is the microscope adapter. If you have uh, a use for that, uh, if not, that's always in your box, so you may be able to utilize that if you choose to. 
Um, lastly, let's talk about the micro USB cable. So the micro USB cable simply allows you to connect this uh, to your computer. So what's great about this microscope camera, uh, the, the document camera here, the Mimeo View, is that it takes one cable. One cable connects it to your computer, and that same cable not only connects it to your computer, but also powers it. So you have a 10-foot USB cable, so you can really do whatever you want to uh, uh, in the vicinity of your computer that you might want to do. So it gives you a lot of different options. So on the back of the Memeo uh, View camera, you'll notice there's that micro uh, USB connection. You simply plug that in and you're ready to go. Again, one core does it all. If you need it, it also does come with a built-in Kensington lock, and that's for, for security. So you can uh, put that particular lock, uh, locking mechanism in there, and uh, the Memeo View will be uh, secured uh, nice and safe. Um, so that is a little bit of a rundown of the hardware review. Again, you have the flexible gooseneck uh, camera and the flexible gooseneck LEDs. You have the Kensington lock. You have an easy connection with the micro USB cable. And it also does come with that microscope adapter that allows you to have the option to uh, attach that right to a microscope. So let's look at some of the buttons that you'll find on this. So what I really have always liked as an educator about the Mimeo View is its simplicity. It really is a very simplistic uh, uh, tool to utilize. Uh, you can get up and running very, very quickly. There are three buttons on the base of the camera. So you have one button here, which is an auto-tune button. So keep in mind, when as soon as you turn the, the uh, Memeo View document camera on, it automatically goes into an auto-tune mode where it focuses out, it focuses in, and gives you the best image. If you need to, uh, or things have moved, you can obviously click an auto-tune button uh, right there on the left. It's a little eye icon, and that will go through the auto-tune process itself. There is a rotate button right in the middle, so it allows you for each, each press to rotate the image 90 degrees uh, clockwise. And then there's also a pause button right there on the, on the base of the menu view, and that allows you to pause live action. So if you're watching some organism swim in a dish and you want to pause it, uh, you can simply freeze frame it and then go about uh, doing whatever you want with that image. It does, uh, so if we go to the front of the device, there's a power button, so that is one way to turn it on. You simply press it once. It turns it on automatically. It goes into an autofocus mode, and you can press it again to shut it off. Very, very simple. There's a light on the front that will indicate um, what uh, the power situation is. Obviously, if it's off, you're not getting power. It's not connected. You definitely want, like with all of our other products that have a power button like this, the solid green. So green means go. That means your software is running and you're all set. If it's flashing green, your software may not be fully open, or you might have a loose connection. So definitely check your USB connection, both on the camera as well as uh, on the computer. So we definitely recommend that you uh, plug in the USB cable into a dedicated USB port on your computer, rather than a hub that you might have. So if you have one of these uh, USB hubs, you know, there's lots of devices that are USB powered. If you have a device that allows you to plug four or five devices in, uh, I would not recommend plugging it into that. It needs a dedicated power supply coming directly from your computer. So definitely uh, plug it directly in. So that's a little bit of a rundown on the menu of your buttons. Uh, so let's get into some live uh, 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 examples of what you're going to see here. So as soon as I would press the power button on the menu of your camera, you're going to see a screen pop up on your window just like this. So what's great about the Memeo View is that it uses, utilizes the same exact software, Memeo Studio, that you're already familiar with. So it does bring up a view window, which at the bottom of the view window, you have a number of icons that you can utilize to really customize the view, if you will. So you have a little light bulb here, and that light bulb will allow you to control the two LED lights. So if you need to shut those lights off, you can press that, and that will shut the lights off, and click it again, and it will turn them on. Uh, you have an eye here, which allows you to auto-tune right from the control panel. So you don't have to be at the actual Mimeo view. You can be using your, your Mimeo Teach stylus or your Mimeo pad or the Mimeo mobile app to control all, all of this. If you press the uh, auto-tune button, it will go into an auto-tune uh, feature. The next one is a, uh, allows you to do some small adjustments with the auto-tune, so you can kind of uh, do your own adjustments um, to the contrast and the brightness. You have your rotate buttons here. You've got your counterclockwise and you've got your uh, clockwise. Again, 90 degrees each turn. You have your pause button. It pauses that live action. You have a clear annotation button here. So you can use your regular uh, Mimeo Studio tools, the pen tools, and, and annotate anything on the screen. Uh, mark it up as, as you will. 
And if you uh, press the uh, clear uh, annotations button, that will wipe the screen totally away. So it gives you a lot of different options that you have there um, for you to, to utilize what's going on there. The next button is the copy to clipboard. So this allows you to copy whatever image is, is shown on the screen. It allows you to copy it to your clipboard and then paste it into Mimeo Studio Notebook or any other application. I'll demonstrate that feature in just a second. Uh, you have a, a zoom in, a zoom out, and a full screen button, just like in the software. You have a little tools button, which allows you to turn on the Mimeo Studio tools if they would happen to be closed. And you also have access to the Mimeo Studio recorder. So you can record anything going on in the screen at the Mimeo View. So the Mimeo View is much more than a document camera. It can be utilized as a webcam. It can be utilized uh, for Skype. It can be utilized to record uh, uh, student portfolio videos. It has a, a ton of different options that you can utilize. And then lastly, we have a full screen button here, which puts uh, uh, everything into a presentation mode. So it expands that view window into a full screen. So, uh, so with that said, Let's go into our first activity to demonstrate what we're going to show here. So here's our objective. Let me pop down our objective. So what we're going to do is we're going to trace some objects found within the actual view window. So to do that, I'm going to pull out some objects here. And the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually uh, turn on my menu view. So I'm going to press the button. And you're going to see my screen comes up. It says acquiring image. Let me resize the window here. So it's going to say acquiring image. And it's going to go into a focus mode. And it's automatically going to try to focus in on this. So uh, hopefully our video feed will be, will be all right here. So let me move this image into a, a decent light. So right there, I have an image. So I can adjust my LED lights if I choose to get a better image. Uh, at this point, if I wanted to, I'm going to go ahead and freeze the image. Not that it's moving, but I'm going to go ahead and freeze it. And now I can use any of my tools to trace uh, anything that I wanted to. So if I wanted students to come up here and trace different shapes, uh, they can come up here and maybe trace uh, the end of this. Let me get a thicker pin here. They could trace the end of this uh, USB, so maybe there's a square shape. Uh, heck, they could even use some of the tools built into the software, such as shape recognition. And what shape recognition does is as you draw with a normal, uh, a normal uh, pen, it automatically turns it into a shape. So let me make that thicker so you can see it. So again, if I wanted to maybe draw around this part of the, of the device here, let me get a color that we're going to be able to see. If I wanted to draw around maybe the, the, this uh, purple part of this thumb drive, as soon as I connect the lines, it automatically turns into a shape. So shape recognition, I have access to all my existing tools that I'd want. Uh, if I wanted to, I can clear off all my annotations by clearing all. It clears everything away real easy. I can rotate my image by clicking the button, either within the software control panel here or, again, on the, on the uh, uh, device itself, the memory view itself, I could press the rotate button. If I want to work on my my uh, my uh, tuning of this, I can click on the advanced tune options, and you're going to see here that I can control the brightness of that, and I can also control the contrast of that. Um, and so I can always go back to default or have it just auto-tune if I'd like to do that. So I have control of all that. So let's say if I wanted this particular object and I want to utilize that for something else in my file, I can go into the copy to clipboard. So when I do this, my entire screen is going to go gray. And as it goes gray, I'm going to have the option to, and you may not be able to see this um, uh, with our recording, but I'm going to get a little crosshair. So I can actually click and drag as my screen goes gray and drag around the part that I want and let go. So as soon as I let go, that part that I selected is now copied to my clipboard. And so now at this point, I can go ahead and either minimize this uh, menu view window. I'm going to actually go ahead and close it out. And if I wanted to, I can actually, actually now within my Mimeo uh, Studio software come over here and I can hit paste. And if I hit paste, there is that USB uh, image. I mean, I can resize it. I can rotate it. There's so many things that I can do with this camera. It's, it's incredible. So I can bring in any type of image, bring it in, manipulate it, and do all sorts of things with that. So just gives you a sample of what we can do. Let's do one more uh, uh, idea here. So I'm going to, again, turn on, turn on my camera. And we're going to look at a peacock feather. So maybe we've been studying uh, peacocks. 
uh, and all their habits and all those different things. But what I want to show you in particular here is just the quality of the image. So you see there, it automatically focuses in. Let me actually resize my screen for the recording. Let me get that down a little bit better. So again, I, it's a fantastic image. If I wanted to, I could use the zoom in tool within the Mimeo Studio toolbar, but I can also use the zoom tools right here. They're both the same. So if I want to click and drag around this part of the feather to focus my students in on maybe the color patterns, you're going to see a very dynamic and, and a very impressive color uh, display of that uh, of that peacock feather. So again, I can record anything that I'm doing. I can annotate anything I'm doing. I can have students come up and, and draw around things. Uh, maybe that looks like an eye. We can talk about why would a peacock have maybe a, an eye-looking feature on a feather. We can talk about sur being able to survive and adapt and all those kind of things. So there's so many things that I can do. So I have absolute control of this image using all the features right within the toolbar down here. I can pause the image. I can rotate it. Uh, again, I can zoom in. I can zoom out. I can go to full screen. And once again, I could click on the Mimeo recorder if I choose. And at any time, I could click to record an area of this and maybe make a little movie out of, out of what I'm talking about here. So, uh, and we, we talk more about the Mimeo recorder in our Mimeo Studio Advanced Quick Learn. So I would encourage you to check that out uh, if you have an interest in looking at the recorder. So the main point is all the features and all the tools that you are already familiar with in Mimeo Studio, those are all at your access while using the Mimeo View. So it gives you a lot of options for what you can do there. So just a review of the Mimeo View buttons once again. Uh, there it is. Uh, you should have received at the very beginning of the session. Um, if, um, if you didn't, I'm going to actually go ahead and rescind that uh, package right now. It's going to be uh, different documents and such uh, for the Mimeo view. So uh, you're going to see a little indication that pops up here in just a second. And just you can accept that if you choose to. It's going to be a variety of reference cards that you can utilize. So let me uh, get that set up here. So I'm going to send you a Mimeo view reference card. That's coming at you. I'm going to send you a Mimeo view software card. So I'm going to send two or three of these. And then lastly, a Mimeo View classroom uses. So it gives you a few different ways to think about how to use uh, the Mimeo View as with any other document camera in your classroom. So those are coming your way. You can simply click on each of those to save to a location of your choice on your desktop and then uh, utilize those as you choose. Again, those are all available on our website, Mimeo.com. So as we start to wrap this up, of course, you want to take care of your Mimeo View. Uh, when it comes to cleaning, which uh, inherently by using it, it may get uh, smudged and dirtied up, which is absolutely fine. So like with any electronics, you want to be uh, very careful when you clean it. So use a lint-free cloth. Um, you want to use uh, maybe isopropyl alcohol, maybe a diluted, maybe even diluted dishwashing detergent or a diluted glass cleaner to clean anything. Definitely um, make sure you don't include anything that has ammonia, as ammonia will discolor that and maybe harm the plastic. So. So to clean the exterior, like with any electronics, you want to disconnect it from any power source. So unplug it. Uh, use that lint-free cloth or that uh, mild, uh, damp cloth with one of the cleaning agents on it to clean any exterior, uh, remove the dirt smudges. And then when you're done cleaning it, like with anything else, you can reconnect it. Uh, to clean that camera lens, you want to be very careful. Like with any sensitive uh, glass, you want to use a very clean, uh, dry, lint-free cloth to gently wipe the surface of that lens to make sure you have the best image. So. A little bit of care will take that uh, a very long way. So now that you know a little bit about the Mimeo View, I want to leave you with some extensions. So if you have a microscope, if you use a microscope at your grade level, uh, you know, use it with the Mimeo View. Bring in a whole different dimension uh, to how you use the microscope in your, in your classroom. So realistically, if you're just wanting to show an image of something, you no longer would have to get you know, every, every student in your classroom to cycle around to one Mimeo or to one microscope. You could display a, a magnificent uh, image on your screen and have a whole collaborative discussion based upon that, uh, based upon what you see on the Mimeo View. So it brings a great deal of dimension to it, plus the fact that you can bring that image right into Mimeo Studio Notebook and use it for all sorts of other things using the uh, capture to screen. You can also use the Mimeo Studio Recorder uh, with anything you use within Mimeo View to record that. So give that a, a, a try. Uh, of course, you can use any of the tools to mark up anything you see under the Mimeo View camera, and it's fantastic. You can use it as a webcam, as I mentioned. But uh, you, can, you can do so much with this. It's just a matter of up to uh, your 
creativity of how you can use it. So you can definitely learn more about uh, all of our other quick learn sessions and how to tie those into you using the Mimeo View in our other quick learn sessions. So I enjoy uh, uh, invite you to come uh, check those out also. We do have a, a number of other uh, training options, both on demand and online. So definitely check those out at Mimeo.com. A number of reference guides, PDF forms, similar to what you were uh, received just a little bit ago. In addition to those, we have a number of video tutorials that are, that are typically three to seven minutes in length that you can download and watch. Uh, we also have a lot more of these quick learn recordings, which you're, you are involved with right now. But we also have our quick learn program, which are uh, live trainings conducted by Mimeo expert teachers using the Mimeo products in their classroom each and every day. I always encourage teachers and other educators to check these out because it gives you a chance to ask questions and work with other teachers using uh, these products and to really benefit from those. So they're absolutely free, uh, no cost to you whatsoever. So check those out again, memu.com. And of course, uh, we have a, a full-blown uh, teacher community called Memio Connect. So you can find that at memioconnect.com. Let me put that in the chat window. Definitely you want to check that out. It has thousands and thousands and thousands of teacher-created lessons uh, there, the whole site is managed by teachers for teachers. So most of those lessons you're going to find are aligned to both uh, state and common core standards. So definitely something you can utilize. What's great about Memo Connect is that you don't have to start from scratch. You can take somebody else's ideas and use it straight away or modify to fit your needs. And that's the beauty of the collaborative community there. So definitely check that out. We even have a, a team of Ask a Masters that answer any questions that you have usually every single day. So check that out. It's definitely worth the while, and it's absolutely free. You can't beat that. As we wrap up here, we have a whole set of Mimeo Classroom products to fit whatever needs you have from the Mimeo Teach, the, the uh, Mimeo Mobile iPad and uh, Android, the Apple and Android uh, mobile device app. So check that out. And of course, you're here for the Mimeo View. So every single one of these devices utilizes the powerful, the dynamic, Mimeo Studio software. So uh, without the software, nothing would be as functional as we have it. So it's fantastic. So with that said, I'd like to say thank you for spending a few minutes with me today. To learn more about the Mimeo View, I'm going to throw a, uh, a link there in the left side of your screen in that chat window. This link is going to take you out to a specific assessment for this session. If you choose to take that assessment, it's a 15 question. It's very easy. Uh, you, can, you can take it a number of times, but if you uh, complete that uh, sufficiently, you will, will receive an email uh, that has a link that allows you to download and to print and to save a customized certificate just for you, which you can utilize that uh, possibly in your school or your district for one hour of professional development credit. So check that out. And uh, we have those in every quick learn session that we uh, provide. So again, you can find more out with anything at memio.com. Definitely contact us at training at memio.com if you have any training needs. And uh, please uh, check out our social media sites and get interactive with us, whether that's on Facebook, YouTube, or on Twitter. So I hope to see you again. And thank you for joining this Memio Training Quick Learn On Demand session.